Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to use self-hosted IR or to write a data to the Azure SQL DB or database from on-premises SQL server by using managed entity on the Azure SQL DB. So this is a kind of complex scenario, uh, not uh, too complex, uh, but sometimes things get complex and it took forever to even uh, understand uh, the documents. So, so if uh, we have here, uh, what I have here, I have Azure Data Factory here and uh, I'm going to uh, open the Azure Data Factory and uh, this is a uh, very simple and then uh, I have created the self-hosted IR so I installed uh, um, the self-hosted IR program on my laptop or my on-premises uh, server and from there uh, I have created uh, this uh, uh, integration serves uh, integration runtime uh, and this is a self-hosted um, this works just great no problem at all so you can take a look further on details and all that uh, it is has only one node uh, now that uh, is simple and straightforward and now on the other side uh, what I have I have uh, two SQL databases uh, so one is uh, right here that's my on-premises uh, and uh, you can see right there there's uh, my uh, username there and this is uh, the Azure SQL DB so what I need to do, I need to read the data from um, this uh, on-premises uh, SQL uh, database, so let's say Tech Brothers IT, and then uh, I have to write the data. Um, this is my uh, table for source, um, so I'm going to use this one. And I have to write that data to the database called Tech Brothers IT, IT DB on the Azure. So you see right there, this is the icon you can see from this is Azure. So if I use uh, the username, like let, let's say this is my TB user on my Azure SQL database, and also I can use uh, uh, the same uh, SQL user on the my on-premises, no problem at all. But I would like to use the managed identity for my Azure SQL database. So that's where the problem start. Let's go ahead and uh, create a very simple pipeline in which we will be using uh, the credential called SQL credential. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and create a new pipeline here and uh, we will use the copy activity. So bring the copy activity here, go to source and go to the new and here uh, we will be reading the data from uh, on-premises SQL. So I will say SQL and here I will select a SQL server, click next and uh, here I'm going to go ahead and create new um, on-prem uh, link service uh, for my database. So here I have to provide the, the server name so I don't remember most of the time server name so I'm going to click right there and uh, sometime uh, you take a whole lot of time to type and make mistakes so so I'm going to use this command to get my server name now once I have that I'm going to put my server name here and uh, here uh, I have to put the database name also I'm going to go back and uh, here I will use uh, just copy the database name let's uh, add database name here and now we have two options as we are connecting to the on-premises SQL database, so there are not a whole lot of options such as managed identity and all that there. There are only two options, a SQL authentication and Windows authentication. In my case, I'm going to go with the SQL authentication. Let me put username here and then provide the password. Now let's test the connection. So if you notice there, we, it's taken for a long time to run it and the reason is that I did not use the self-hosted IR here because one of the call came and I got confused like, oh, I need to take call or I need to keep making the video. Anyways, you need to use the self-hosted IR because we need to read the data from the on-premises SQL. So I'm going to click right there and now I change to the self-hosted IR. Now I'm going to click uh, next uh, or test connection and it is successful just in a blink of eye. Let's create this on-premises SQL link service and we use the SQL authentication here. Now you can select a total sale table here and you can leave this one here or leave the schema. Let's go to sync here and now we write the data to the Azure SQL DB. So Azure SQL DB and I'm creating the link service. So it's called Azure SQL linked service. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and create a new link service. And uh, I can use the uh, self-hosted IR without any problem. And I'm going to select my subscription. I'm going to use uh, the server name. And I'm going to select uh, my TechRose IT DB. That's my Azure SQL DB. And here I have multiple options. Um, I have SQL authentication. I have managed identity. I have service principle and user assigned managed identity. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do SQL authentication for now and uh, let this pipeline run. Then we are going to play with manage identity and see what the steps we need to take. So click right there and then provide username, tb user, 
and then uh, provide the password test our connection it should be successful as well and all good you notice there in both of the cases I use the self-hosted IR so to the connect to the on-premises or to the Azure uh, database um, so I use the, the uh, self-hosted IR here you can uh, just leave everything as it is and hit OK go to open here and now we can uh, uh, provide the table name I'm gonna go ahead and say my total sale demo so this is all good and we will go ahead and execute our pipeline so our pipeline failed uh, not because of any problem uh, but uh, the table did not exist uh, so not a big deal we are gonna fix that one right away go to the settings and here we are gonna say uh, create auto table so that should take care of it uh, now we didn't have uh, it's gonna run just fine and in both uh, cases that uh, we have used uh, the uh, SQL credential for our uh, on-premises SQL as well as for our Azure SQL DB so that's completed and uh, you can see that is using self-hosted IR and we can go back here and uh, we can go to the Azure SQL DB and here uh, we can uh, go to tables and uh, let it uh, refresh and here is uh, our table so right click here and uh, select the data and I know that there was only one record in my source table and that's what it is there so it's all good here now what we are gonna do here we are gonna go back to our pipeline and here we are gonna do some experiments click on the link services and here we have the link service that's pointing to the Azure SQL so that's right there uh, Azure SQL uh, d database and uh, that's where we are using self-hosted IR with the, our SQL credentials uh. now what we want to do we want to use manage identity if I change to the manage identity that's my data factory and that's uh, the object ID and if I test uh, it will fail so to pass that uh, now we have to do a few things so let's uh, take a look on the error and here is uh, the error so important thing is saying that cannot connect to the SQL database uh, this is our Azure database uh, tech browser IT and uh, here is the uh, error uh, allow firewall and uh, integration runtime to access the login failed for and token identifier this principle so it's not uh, uh, we have to add this uh, Azure data factory in the SQL uh, uh, database uh, you know there so we can uh, uh, use the managed entity uh, I look through the documents and I will share the document with you and the um, uh, documents were pretty confusing but anyways uh, what we need to do here uh, we need to do a couple of steps um, so first of all uh, what we are gonna do we are gonna go here and go to the our three dots here and create Azure uh, Active Directory uh, user so that user we will create because we would like to make this the user as the admin and then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, add some uh, credential uh, to the our uh, Azure SQL database so, so we can uh, use it now let's create a new user and I'm gonna call this user Bob so this is Bob and his first name is Robert and last name is Ledson okay now that should do it and uh, okay let me create the password and I'm gonna give a password and that should be fine and uh, let's create so now Robert is created and uh, once uh, Bob or Robert is created uh, what we are gonna do we are gonna go to the SQL database um, and in the SQL database uh, click right there on the server name and here you go to the active directory and uh, here you're gonna set admin and uh, we are going to look for Bob so once uh, we look for Bob and uh, we create uh, Bob right there and actually so we are adding Bob as the admin uh, hit save now Bob has been added uh, to our Azure SQL database um, as admin so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my uh, SSMS and here I'm gonna connect uh, to my database uh, tech browser uh, server dot database dot windows dot net and here uh, I will be using uh, uh, the uh, universal with the MFA Active Directory so here instead of uh, Amir I'm gonna provide Bob and connect so once we add Bob here he's gonna ask us password and uh, we are gonna provide the password and here we will sign in it's gonna ask us to change the password so I'm gonna change the password sign in again 
and we are going to skip for 14 days here and we should be logging with the Bob. Okay, so we are going to open this uh, window here and uh, as we are logged in with Bob and open a new query. And then uh, what we have to do first of all, uh, we'll be creating our user and here is our data factory name. So we will be creating from external provider and uh, that's how we are going to work it out to, to provide the, uh, the user managed entity. So we took our Azure data factory name here. Uh, right there, that's my Azure Data Factory Tech Bros ADF, uh, and uh, we are going to add that. Uh, so, see right there, and uh, it is uh, adding to the master. So, it depends uh, like where you want to add. So, let's say if I will add to the master, uh, and then still I have to provide the permission on uh, the databases, all right? So, I can uh, simply go ahead and uh, execute, and it should add that uh, user here. So, if I go to the uh, system databases here, and now we can go to security and here we have this user added. See right there and Bob was already added because it's a sys, uh, he's a sysadmin. So now this user is added and uh, what we can do, we have to do, uh, we have to provide permission on tech browser IT. And uh, I'm uh, just changing the database here and then uh, we are adding uh, our uh, role uh, db reader and db writer so if i don't do that uh, it's not going to throw me error so because i want to read and write the data to the tech browser's uh, it and that's where i am uh, uh, adding that uh, now if i go to the tech browser's it this user uh, has been added there in the security as well and i can take a look there, right there okay so we have a given reader and writer to this um, this is just uh, these are the uh, statements I'm going to give you so you can change according to your but these are the three statements you're going to run first you're going to create a user and the, the, this is your uh, data factory name that's your managed entity uh, system managed entity and then uh, you have given the permissions in my case I have given a data reader and writer to this uh, database uh, tech browser ITDB and this is happening on Azure SQL database where we have logged in by using Bob who is a sysadmin we did in the previous step now we should be all good here and I'm going to go back here and you can see that I'm using self-hosted.ir and I'm connecting uh, to my um, uh, Azure SQL uh, ser server here and that's the name of the database and I'm using manage entity. Last time it failed. This time I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, test again and it should uh, pass this time or test successfully. So you can see right there now I'm using manage entity and everything is good. I'm going to go ahead and save it and uh, now if i go back to my pipeline and uh, right here and uh, here in source remember that uh, sql server table one that's our link uh, data set and if i open this one and uh, check uh, my link service uh, so this is my source uh, coming from azure uh, sorry this is coming from uh, my own premises um, so we all good here if i go back here and if i go to sync here and this is my azure sql link service uh, let's open that make sure we are uh, using the right one and here you can see that uh, self hosted IR is uh, pointing to the my Azure SQL uh, server and here is my Azure SQL DP I'm using managed entity and I can test uh, successfully no problem we have already done that uh, in the past as well just few minutes ago uh, uh, in the link service so test successful all good and well, now we can write the data so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, here is my source if you guys remember that's uh, where our source database and the tech browser ITDB and this was the table I can simply go and say edit top uh, 200 rows and let's add one more record so just uh, uh, Raza and uh, that's it so we have two records in this uh, source table now if I will uh, uh, we are already logged in here so we can take a look on the database here and uh, I can go to the tables right there and remember that there is only one record actually this was uh, so cancel this out this was a table and see this it has only one table if we want to do auto create that will auto create but in my case I'm gonna leave this table this time and uh, not do auto create um, so we'll do just do none no? and uh, the table is already there so we should be fine let's uh, execute our pipeline and it should read the data from our on premises uh, sql server by using um, our sql authentication and then write to the azure sql db by using managed entity in our azure data factory by using self-hosted ir so you can see it is using self-hosted ir 
Uh, it read the data from our SQL server that's on premises. It read two rows and then has written the data to the Azure SQL database. So that gives us a little more details there. So just remember that the steps you have to do. Uh, let's take a look on the data, final data, and uh, so you can see right there. So there are three records in the destination now, and this is our Azure SQL database. So, so remember the steps. Uh, you have to create a R user in a Azure Active Directory, then made him a sys admin, and then uh, log into your Azure SQL database uh, as uh, that user, and then uh, have to run these uh, statements. So, so one of the statements you have to add your Azure Data Factory manage. Uh, this is managed entity as external user, uh, sorry, as user, and uh, then uh, you have to give them a read and write permission on that database so from where you want to uh, extract data or write data. So I hope this video will help. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. I will put these statements uh, in the description.